Hi, Gigi from the RBA. This video is our first on unconventional monetary policy tools. In the previous video, we talked about short and longer term interest rates and the risk-free yield curve, important concepts for understanding unconventional monetary policy. In this video, we'll begin to look at some of these unconventional tools. If you haven't already, I recommend you watch our videos on interest rates, conventional monetary policy, and bonds in the yield curve before proceeding in with this one. So first off, why do we need to use other monetary policy tools? Why isn't the target for the cash rate enough? This chart shows the cash rate target since the early 1990s. Over this period, the RBA mostly did just use the cash rate target to conduct monetary policy. For example, in response to the global financial crisis in 2008, you can see the RBA lowered the cash rate by around 4 percentage points. But over the past 30 years or so, the cash rate target has trended downwards. And this is a global trend that's affected many economies around the world. At the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic in February 2020, the level of the cash rate target was 0.75%, and by November 2020, the RBA had lowered it to 0.1%. This is the lowest ever level for the cash rate. With the Reserve Bank Board stating that a negative cash rate is extraordinary, extraordinarily unlikely in Australia, this is also probably its lowest practical level. But even with the cash rate at its lowest practical level, the Reserve Bank Board decided that monetary policy could do more to support the economy and help the RBA meet its objectives. So in response, the RBA has turned to other monetary policy tools. These tools allow the RBA to influence a range of interest rates, other than the cash rate, that are still higher than their lowest practical levels. This is a list of the different unconventional monetary policy tools used by the RBA in response to COVID-19. Even though these tools are unconventional, they are always part of the RBA's toolbox, and the RBA has used several of them before. We call them unconventional because they did not traditionally take a front seat in helping central banks around the world, including the RBA, to achieve their monetary policy objectives. And while we do refer to them as unconventional, it's important to keep in mind that several central banks have used these tools to conduct their monetary policy since the global financial crisis. So the tools we'll talk about in this video are forward guidance and asset purchases. In the next video, we'll cover the term funding facility and market operations. So in the previous video, you'll recall I mentioned that the main way unconventional tools work is by influencing longer term interest rates both directly and through expectations about future short-term interest rates, and through reducing uncertainty that interest rates might rise in the future. What this means is that unconventional tools have the same key objective as lowering the cash rate target, to lower interest rates across the economy. First up is forward guidance. Forward guidance occurs when the central bank communicates about its future plans for monetary policy. For instance, the RBA might indicate that it will not raise the cash rate target until it's achieved its goals, such as lower unemployment and an increase in inflation. This is called state-based guidance. For example, in November 2020, the RBA said it will not increase the cash rate target until actual inflation is sustainably between the 2-3% target range. Or, the RBA may also commit to a certain stance for monetary policy until a specific point in time. For example, that it will not raise the cash rate target until a future date. This is called time-based guidance. For instance, in November 2020, the RBA also stated that it does not expect to increase the cash rate for at least three years. So how does forward guidance influence interest rates? Let's take a look at the risk-free yield curve. It slopes up here, reflecting the possibility that interest rates will rise in the future. By providing guidance about its plans for the cash rate target, and possibly other monetary policy tools, the RBA can influence expectations about the future level of interest rates and reduce uncertainty about whether they might rise. This is expected to change the shape of the yield curve. If the guidance reflects that the RBA will not raise interest rates, this should flatten the yield curve between the cash rate and the term of the guidance and lower the yield curve further out. On our example yield curve, the guidance given would suggest that the cash rate is not expected to increase for at least three years. Next, let's talk about asset purchases. Asset purchases are unconventional when they are used as a tool to lower interest rates. Keep in mind that some asset purchases occur normally as a part of the RBA's regular market operations. 
So how do asset purchases work? The RBA only purchases government bonds, so let's focus on them. Asset purchases involve the RBA purchasing a government bond outright from a commercial bank in the secondary market. The RBA pays for the bond by creating central bank reserves, which in Australia are called exchange settlement or ES balances. We talked about them before in our video on conventional monetary policy. The RBA credits these reserves to the bank's ES account. As a result, the amount of ES balances in the banking system increases. Now the fact that these purchases occur in the secondary market is important. The secondary market is a marketplace where investors trade their financial assets after they're initially created. There's a different marketplace where government bonds are created or issued by the government. This is called the primary market. See the bonds and yield curve video for more information on this. So purchasing government bonds exclusively in the secondary market means that the RBA never buys them directly from the government. The government does not influence the RBA's decision to purchase bonds, and any bonds the RBA does purchase need to be paid back with interest by the government at a later time. This is very important because it helps to maintain the RBA's independence from the government. So what happens when the RBA purchases a government bond? Let's think about that using a demand and supply framework. So here is the secondary market for government bonds. We've got the quantity of bonds traded on the x-axis and the market price on the y-axis. The blue line is the demand for government bonds and it slopes down because participants in the market will want to purchase less bonds at a higher price. The green line is the supply of government bonds. It slopes up because owners of bonds will want to sell more of them if the price is higher. So, if the RBA purchases government bonds, it's going to add to demand for them in the secondary market. And what this will do is shift the demand line for government bonds right from D to D1. As the demand for government bonds increases, so does their price. As a result, their yield falls. To revisit why bond prices and yields move in opposite directions, see the bonds and yield curve video. So the result of the RBA purchasing government bonds is lower government bond yields. So how do asset purchases work in practice? To answer this, we're going to need to return to the risk-free yield curve. There are two ways to conduct asset purchases. One is to target a specific yield on a bond, committing per to purchase whatever quantity of bonds is necessary to achieve that target. This is called a price target or a yield target. Another way is to target a quantity of bonds to purchase, made at the market price. This is a quantity target and is also known as quantitative easing. So let's talk about a price target first. In a way, a price target for a government bond yield is like an extension of the idea of the cash rate target, just on a different part of the yield curve to the cash rate, which remember is an overnight interest rate. The RBA has a price target for the yield on the three-year Australian government bond on the shorter part of the yield curve. Like the cash rate, this yield is particularly important as a reference point for other interest rates in the Australian economy. With a price target, purchases of bonds are focused around the part of the yield curve where the target is. The quantity of purchases needed could be a lot, a little, or even none. It all depends on conditions in the secondary market. The key is being committed to purchasing these bonds in whatever quantity is necessary to meet the target. Similar to forward guidance, a price target is also expected to change the shape of the yield curve. If the price target is set at the same value as the target for the cash rate, then the yield curve could be expected to flatten between the cash rate and the part of the yield curve that is targeted, as in the chart. In Australia, the yield target is coordinated to have the same timing as the RBA's forward guidance. This means it has a similar impact on the yield curve and, in fact, reinforces the RBA's forward guidance. Targeting a quantity of bond purchases is a little different. A quantity target involves making a commitment to purchase some bonds over a period of time. For example, the Reserve Bank Board committed to purchasing a large volume of bonds on the longer part of the yield curve, around the 5-10 to 10 year term. These purchases are conducted along the yield curve and that adds to demand for all those bonds and lowers their yields. This is expected to change the shape of the yield curve, lowering it and making it flatter. In addition, when banks sell government bonds to the RBA, they may well use their ES balances to purchase other financial assets with a higher yield than the interest rate they will receive from the RBA on their ES balances. This increases demand for those assets as well, 
and similar to the example we saw on the previous slide, may lower their yield too. So regardless of whether the central bank targets a quantity of purchases, a specific yield or both, lowering the yield curve reduces government bond yields, helps to reduce interest rates investors expect in the future, and gives them more confidence in their expectations, like we discussed in the previous video on interest rates. This flows through to other interest rates in the economy, because, as we've discussed, the yield curve is an important reference point for many interest rates, including borrowing rates for households and businesses, interest rates on savings accounts, and yields for other financial assets. It also reduces the cost of borrowing for the government. So that's all that we're going to cover in this video. What I want you to take away is that in the end, forward guidance and asset purchases have a similar effect on interest rates as lowering the cash rate target. They just work it a little differently. In the next video, we'll look at our other unconventional monetary policy tools. See you next time.